Hi guys and welcome to A Dark Soul. Today we're gonna talk about resilience, especially after New Year's Eve, for fearful dogs. But first, I want to thank you all for joining me in this first episode of our new season and for helping other dog people getting insights into their dark soul as well with your sharing and your reviewing of the show. I love you all for that. And I hope this again helps you understand your dog a little bit better and help him get the life skill he needs to live happily beside you and enjoy life together. I'm Anita, I'm a professional dog trainer. I show you how to build a trusting relationship with your dog to overcome fear and reactivity and have a good time together again. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And now, stay tuned and have fun. All right, so we are talking about resilience. First of all, resilience is the ability to recover from a startling or fear-inducing situation or a trauma or something that has an impact on somebody's life. No matter how intense the impact is, uh, no matter if it's physical or psychological. Resilience helps us overcome this and get back to our original state. Now, what does that mean? When we have a dog who got startled by fireworks and he just got scared for a moment because there was a particularly loud explosion, but within seconds he was again able to participate with a search game that we offered or were doing before or was looking at us or did whatever he did before or uh, went back to sleep or whatever. That's a very, very good resilience. Compared to other dogs who hear a loud noise, for example, let's stay with the New Year's Eve situation, and they hear that loud noise, they start expressing very very intense fear so they are hiding under something they are shaking they are drooling they are sweating on their paws they are wide-eyed they have an extreme stress response and it stays that way for a particularly long amount of time okay that's a bad resilience or not yet really well trained resilience let's call it that and why we need resilience is because we cannot stop a startle response forever happening again that's not possible because a startle response is something natural and it happens involuntarily that means we are not choosing to get startled it just happens to us and we cannot do anything about it right it's the same thing for our dogs and the goal shouldn't be that they don't get startled anymore the goal should be that they have enough resilience to bounce back immediately okay that doesn't go for everything because for example if we have some sounds that happen all the time or we really want to train for the loud noises on New Year's Eve, or we want to get our dogs used to whatever there is scary for them. We can use desensitization and get the dog used to the stimulus or counter conditioning while the dog learns that this is actually something good. And that will minimize the startle response as well because the expectance is different but it's not really happening that the dog will not get startled when there is a sudden loud noise in the environment. 
that can still happen, even if we do a very good job with desensitization and counter conditioning. But we improve the resilience. So the dog might get startled anyway, but he will very nicely learn that this means something good is happening. Okay? And this is actually something where we can boost our dog's resilience, where we can train it. We can use counter conditioning for things our dogs are already afraid of and we know about. Sometimes that's a little tricky because the events don't happen on our schedule or on any schedule, like thunderstorms and things like that, earthquakes and all those things. Or it can be something trivial like a car door smashing suddenly in a very close proximity to our dog. And he was doing something else, so he got start startled very intensely. And this is not something that we could plan beforehand. And yes, we could after that train with car doors and we could also train with sound recordings for thunderstorms and things like that. But it's not as easy. New Year's Eve, on the other hand, is very easy to plan because it's always at the same time. Yes, sometimes this gets tricky as well because People are getting more insane, it seems, and they are shooting in November, and then things get out of hand. So we are having a more tricky time training for that. So we have to boost our dog's resilience overall, and that also means increasing our dog's confidence. And we can do that with a variety of things, and actually, everything we do with our dogs in a positive and fear-free and force-free way is increasing the dog's confidence. Now, that sounds very easy. <laughs> it's actually not, because sometimes we try to be very, very thoughtful and we try to get the dog used to something and we end up luring him towards that thing and he's scared and that becomes something aversive, all right? So it's not just giving your dog treats and it's all going to be better. Unfortunately, that would be great. It takes time and it takes effort and it's always easier to do this together with a professional because First of all, we have outside eyes and we have seen a lot. So <laughs> we can compare experiences and we can shift a training plan or a method or whatever into something that fits a little bit better at the moment, at the situation for your dog. And even we trainers get help from our colleagues because whenever it comes to our own dogs, it's different. It's just different. We're too close. And then what you do really doesn't matter that much. You don't even have to train in the situation in the beginning. Yes, it makes sense to work on the situation where your dog's afraid of as well, of course, to get him to have better feelings about it. And that's actually the key ingredient for resilience. The more good experiences the dog has made in the situation and in every other situation, the better he feels in general and the more safety things he has available to him, like a safe zone and you as his caregiver and things he knows will provide good emotions for him, like close contact with you tricks or any form of brain game that is fun and therefore releases endorphins and therefore makes good emotions. Every click or marker signal because it is automatically 
reminding the dog of positive emotions because he knows a reward is coming. Even if he cannot take the reward you're offering in the situation. So for example, if there is a shot and your dog gets startled and you click and you offer a treat and your dog looks at you and cannot eat the treat. All right, but you can still praise your dog and therefore we have something positive. All right. And of course, confidence also helps with resilience and we do the same things for boosting confidence as we do for boosting re resilience okay so for boosting confidence we need success and we need to experience being able to do stuff either with our own bodies or with our minds or affecting things around us and I always say we because it's ex it's exactly the same thing for our dogs we are no different in that <laughs> department so again every marker signal that tells the dog that he just did something right gives him a little boost in confidence every problem he solves on his own so that includes intelligence games, search games, tricks, every kind of brain game there is <laughs> outside when it's trained positively. So no pressure, no frustration. So we need very tiny training steps. With very tiny training steps, we can avoid frustration. And that's when we have a lot of positive emotions and a lot of positive experiences and that boosts the confidence of course also everything where the dog has to move in a certain way and get some kind of success out of that for example climbing on a stone a huge stone or working over a bridge or figuring out how to get treats out of an intelligence game all of these or teaching the dog that he's able to walk backwards on cue or turn around on cue or stuff like that so do something with the body and therefore have success with moving a certain way maybe he didn't know he could move that way and maybe he just didn't know that this will earn him something nice so again, everything that has a positive outcome for the dog. And my number one method for dealing with something in the situation is marking the fear response. That sounds a little weird because people seem to always be afraid of increasing fear with positive reinforcement, even though that is absolutely not possible. What it does is, it counters the negative emotion with an immediate reminder of a positive one. No, your dog will not instantly go from fearful to happily excited <laughs> usual self, but it decreases the time it takes for him to recover every single time. So for example, Sammy is afraid of insects and a bunch of other things out there <laughs> with insects it's again it's not predictable it's not really trainable because you cannot adopt an insect and then train the insect to do exactly what you want when you want it and all of those things yes you can kind of counter condition the noise but for him it's not only the noise and no he has never been stung or anything it's just something he developed and the worst thing for him is when an insect touches him and he generalized that to not only insects touching him but everything touching him outside when he didn't expect it to so that could be a leaf it could be a grass 
string it could be a branch it could be anything so anything that touches him suddenly is an issue and in the beginning whenever something like that happened or with insects is also the noise um and whenever he got startled because of something touching him or because an insect uh, flying by him he got panicked he really ran away it was not just Oh, what was that? It was really, oh my god, I'm being killed by this. And he ran away. He was not reacting to anything I did. He was not able to listen to me. He was not able to do anything. He just ran away and he had to go home. It wasn't even ran away a little bit and then recovered. He just had to go home or back in the car. Okay, so that was how intense this was. And I just started marking the moment he reacted because, again, I couldn't mark it any sooner because I didn't realize it. I couldn't see it. It's just, it's not like he needs a wasp for that that's big enough to see. No, it's tiny insects. It's tiny things in the environment. Sometimes I'm guessing he is imagining things because it's really I don't see anything okay so I had to mark the earliest thing I could see and that was the fear response and in the beginning I thought well I don't know if that's gonna work because I marked and I praised because of course he couldn't eat anything or play when he was in his fear response and I praised and just followed him home and after some time training i realized that he didn't actually go home he stopped he still ran away but he stopped and then recovered and now it is at a point where he still gets startled again this is involuntarily he jumps a short distance away he stops and he looks at me that's all that's all that remains of this whole panic response just with marking and praising in the situation and that's huge i think that's huge why don't you write me in the comments if you think that's huge too <laughs> if you're listening on youtube of course and this is again how powerful our marker signal can be and that's why i would always recommend using a marker signal especially for fearful dogs especially for reactive dogs especially for dogs who are very 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 fast in their responses because we are not that fast <laughs> and if we want our dogs to change something we have to help them understand what we truly want and if we want them to get more resilient we have to help them on their way and this is an excellent way of doing that so i hope this helps you with bringing your dog into more resilient ways of living and if you have somebody who could benefit from this episode feel free to share it and help even more people understand their dogs better and help them live a happy life on their side I wish you an amazing time. I wish you a lot of fun training. And if you have any questions, let me know, write me an email and we'll see what I can do to help. That's it. Until next time. Bye.